I'm here with the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, and this promises to be one of the best camera phones of the year, if not ever, with a 200 megapixel camera, an exclusive Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor, and a design that is more S Pen friendly. Let's go take a look. There's a couple of things I noticed about the Galaxy S23 Ultra's design right off the bat. The cameras on the back are even bigger compared to the Galaxy S22 Ultra, and the display is flatter. There's a gentler curve to the 6.8 inch panel, and a flatter surface area, which makes using an S Pen a bit more comfortable as you get to the edges. The Galaxy S23 Ultra should be tougher too, as it's the first phone with Corning Gorilla Glass Victus 2, which promises to protect the front and back better from scratches and drops. The Galaxy S23 Ultra comes in four colors, including phantom black, cream, green, and lavender. I'm partial to the green as it pops the most out of all the hues, followed by lavender, which is subtle and elegant. The S23 Ultra is the same size as the last model, but it's a bit heavier at 8.2 ounces versus 8 ounces for the S22 Ultra. It's hard to improve on something that's almost perfect. Like the Galaxy S22 Ultra, the S23 Ultra features a 6.8 inch Quad HD OLED screen and a peak brightness of 1750 nits. You also get the same 120 hertz refresh rate as before, which can scale down to one hertz. During my hands-on time, I was impressed with the overall image quality from the S23 Ultra. When watching the trailer for The Mandalorian Season 3, the shiny helmets popped off the screen, and I enjoyed wide viewing angles. The Galaxy S23 Ultra includes an advanced vision booster feature, which is designed to automatically adjust color and contrast of the image based on ambient lighting conditions. And there's an eye comfort feature to make viewing the display easier for longer stretches. Is it overkill or a game changer? The Galaxy S23 Ultra is the first flagship phone in the US to pack a 200 megapixel camera, and Samsung says the sensor can deliver poster-sized prints. But that's not the only benefit of having a main wide camera this powerful. The adaptive pixel sensor can combine 16 pixels into one larger pixel for brighter and more detailed photos, especially in low light. Shooting in 200 megapixel mode also gives you the option to reframe the image after you shoot. The software on my unit wasn't final, but I was impressed how I could crop in on Samsung's laptop at a plant without losing much sharpness. The Galaxy S23 Ultra has a new 12 megapixel front camera, which is technically a downgrade versus the S22 Ultra's 40 megapixel selfie shooter. But Samsung promises better portraits overall, thanks to better AI. The selfie I took looked very good indoors with a compelling bokeh effect. You still get dual 10 megapixel telephoto lenses with 3x and 10x optical zoom, and a very strong 30x digital zoom option. I could easily make out text on books from across the room. The 100x space zoom option is still available, though the results can be shaky. On the video front, the S23 Ultra offers improved video stabilization, and video recording now goes up to 8K at 30 frames per second with a wider angle of 80 degrees. The Galaxy S23 Ultra packs an exclusive version of Qualcomm's new chip called the Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 mobile platform for Galaxy. That's a bad name, but the good news is that Samsung promises that this processor can deliver even higher clock speed than the standard version of the chip, going as high as 3.36 gigahertz. In my hands-on testing, I wasn't allowed to run any benchmarks yet or play third-party games, but I can say that this phone was very responsive when using the app switcher and popping in and out of open apps. The only lag I noticed was when attempting to edit a 200 megapixel photo, though that might be due to the unfinished software or just the sheer size of the image file. Stay tuned for our own benchmark testing and comparisons versus the iPhone 14 Pro Max. Running on top of Android 13, the new One UI 5.1 software for Galaxy S23 Ultra offers a number of handy improvements. For example, with Bixby Text Call, Samsung's assistant can answer incoming calls for you and then can pass on messages by texting. It's actually pretty cool to see and hear it in action, though callers might be freaked out the first time. There's also a new modes option that lets you create customized settings based on what you're doing, whether it's exercise, driving, work, or sleep. There's also more personalization features in One UI 5.1, such as improved stack widgets and recommended apps and actions for different times of the day. The Galaxy S23 Ultra has a release date of February 17th and is available for pre-order now. The starting price is $1199, the same as last time, but you get 256 gigs of storage. That's double the S22 Ultra, which is good news. The S23 Ultra is also available with 512 gigs or one terabyte of storage. The Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra offers only a handful of meaningful upgrades over its predecessor, including the 200 megapixel camera 
flatter display, and more powerful processor. So it doesn't look like there's enough reasons to upgrade from the S22 Ultra. But if you have an older S21 Ultra or other flagship from a few years ago, the S23 Ultra could be the premium Android flagship to beat. We'll just have to test out the cameras versus the Pixel 7 Pro and iPhone 14 Pro Max to see just how far Samsung has come. But if you're willing to pay top dollar for the S23 Ultra, it could be the phone for you. Overall, I think the Galaxy S23 Ultra has a ton of potential, but it should at $1,200. We're going to have to see if this measures up to the hype. Stay tuned for our full review at tomsguide.com. This is Mark Spoonhour.